Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome back to another episode of Cryptolite. As most of you know, I've been away on a new job recently. It's a promotion and it's a very good job. However, it's also a very busy job and it's taking me quite a bit of time to find my feet and that's why I haven't found the time or been struggling to do regular videos. I reckon it'll still be another month before I can return to doing regular videos. Nonetheless, the crypto market goes on and recently we've seen quite a down market especially over the past 10 days. Yesterday was the first day that the market started to turn green and as the market is starting to pick up, I was requested on our Telegram group chat today to share what coins am I personally paying close attention to right now. I thought that was a fabulous idea and that's what this video is all about. If you would like to learn what coins am I paying attention to right now, keep watching this video. There are three coins that I'm paying particular close attention to in this season and these are three coins that I feel have been hit harder than most over the past couple of weeks. As a result, their token prices are also a bit lower than the rest of the market which means that I feel they are poised for a bigger recovery than the rest of the market. Particularly as well, these are three coins that I believe have good fundamentals and so I believe that they will recover in a good manner when the market recovers. Fundamentals are so important in investing. I don't know about you, but in the recent bear market like we had over the last 10 days, I slept really well over the bear market because the projects that I have invested in, I believe have great fundamentals and they're not projects that are going to fold, meaning that at some point they will recover and at some point they will earn me money. And that's what I believe and that's why I don't lose sleep in a bear market. But over the past week as well, on social media and forums, I've seen people become extremely anxious and even angry about their investments and the poor price point and they start blaming the project or the team for not delivering and they start calling their very own project that they've invested in a dying project. So don't do things like that guys. The teams that are behind the projects are already under tremendous pressure in bad times like this. The last thing that you and I want to do as part of the community is to add unnecessary pressure. So the message I guess is to invest in fundamentals. Choose the projects that you invest based on the technology, the team, the investors, the kind of factors that don't change during a bear market. Understand the projects that you're investing in. A little pitch here is that this channel does great reviews for projects. We look thoroughly at every project, the good and the bad, before giving our final impression on the project. I think that we are a good place to learn about the fundamentals of a project. That being said, today's video is not a coin review, it's more of a market review, particularly highlighting three coins that I feel are very undervalued at the moment. And then I want to end by going a quick run through some of my other favorite coins and what I feel would be an attractive entry point for those coins. None of this is financial advice, of course, just me sharing my thoughts with you. The first coin I want to look at is Loopbring. We haven't covered Loopbring in a review on this channel. It's a protocol for a decentralized token exchange, meaning it's not a decentralized exchange in itself. It's the protocol or the infrastructure for building a decentralized exchange or for making a wallet have a decentralized exchange feature. Currently, Loopring is already functioning and Ethereum compatible, and they have plans to make it Qtum and Neo compatible as well. On their board of directors are very prominent people, including Da Hongfei, the CEO of NEO. So Loopring in general is a project that many people have high expectations for. One unique feature of Loopring is that they have plans to airdrop 60% of their max token supply to all token holders over three airdrops. So this is a very large portion to airdrop 60%. The snapshots for each airdrops will be done on July the 5th, which has passed, September the 5th, and November the 5th. The first snapshot has already been done on July the 5th, and the first airdrop has already started on July the 10th. Now, 20% of the total supply, which is one third, right? 20 supply, 20% 20 is too big for any airdrop because if you drop 20% of your tokens in a single airdrop, people will dump and that will cause a significant drop in the price. So each airdrop is set to be released slowly over two years. Now, if one year has 365 days, two years has 730 days. So basically, the amount that you are due to receive in an airdrop 
every day they will release it to you at 1 over 730 of a fraction. So the airdrop was also meant to be facilitated by exchanges, one of the exchanges being Gate.io. Now what happened on the first day of the airdrop, which is July the 10th, is that Gate.io as an exchange made a mistake. Instead of releasing only a small portion, one out of 730 portion of the airdrop to the token holders, Gate.io mistakenly released the full amount of the airdrop to the token holders. So token holders on Gate.io suddenly found themselves with a sizable portion more tokens compared to token holders on other exchanges or private wallets. Specifically, they had 730 times more tokens than other tokens holders. So now, if you are a token holder and you find it, suddenly find yourself with 730 times more tokens, what do you do? Being a typical token holder out to make a profit, they dumped it and they took a profit. As a result of that dump, the price of Loot Ring plummeted and as you can imagine, there was outrage from the community. But what is done cannot be undone and that is just how things are currently. So the token price of Loot Ring took a massive hit and is only just starting to recover. That's why I think that now is a very potentially good entry point into this coin. Now you might say, why not a few days earlier when it was even lower, sitting about um, 25 cents? If you could tell the future, yes, 25 cents might be an even better position, of course. But at that time, just after the news came out, there was so much unhappiness, even rage in the community, and the markets was looking so bad, it was impossible to give any prediction or guess whether the price the next day would pick up or drop even further. But things are starting to look now that they are picking up as the community seems to have calmed down somewhat and the market is also picking up and there's more volume. So overall, I think now is a fairly good entry point. As an investor, I've rarely been able to pick the rock bottom or exactly the pick um, to sell. I've learned for myself as an investor to be content with buying at a good entry price and selling at a good exit point. I don't need to catch right at the bottom or right at the top. I also do a lot of dollar cost averaging in my investment and that's the kind of investor I am. Let me know in the comments below what kind of investor you are and what kind of investment strategies you are using in this recent bear market. The second project that I want to look at is our good friend VeChain. For those of you who have seen our VeChain review video, you know that I think highly of this project. Now back in March, VeChain introduced their Xnode series. The Xnode series is a series of nodes to earn VAT tokens, but there was a minimum stake of 6,000 VAT tokens to own the, the, the smallest uh, Xnode. Now the, X, the number of X nodes is fixed, meaning that even if you buy 6,000 VAT tokens now, you cannot own a VAT uh, X node. Okay? It had to be 6,000 of tokens at that time, and you can upgrade existing X nodes, but you cannot buy new X nodes. So they are a limited commodity. And token holders initially had to always have the minimum number of X nodes to, in order to maintain that node, meaning that you had to have at least 6,000 um, uh, VAT tokens to own the X node. And if you fell below that, you would lose your node permanently. So as you can imagine, this resulted in a lot of tokens being stored in the X nodes. Now, a few days ago, for some reason, maybe it was because of the upcoming swap and people had to actually unload their tokens for the token swap, or maybe it was other reasons, no one knows for sure, but the team announced that the X node holders would be allowed to mobilize their tokens, meaning that they can sell their tokens and buy back at a later time. Okay, the only requirement is that they would have to have the minimum requirement of 6,000 X nodes at the time of snapshots. The last snapshot was on 30th of June and the next one will be at the end of August. So between then and now, okay, uh, between the end of June to end of August, the X node holders are allowed to play around and sell their tokens if they want. So guess what the loyal VeChain X node holders did? That's right, they dumped the coin, caused a crash, and then they are trying to aim to buy it back at the dollar cost average method later on at a cheaper price. So they're trying to increase the number of tokens they have because with more tokens, you can upgrade your X node. So the good news of that dump is that right now, the price is really, really low. Now, having followed VeChain for a while, I think that anything under $3 is very cheap. 
and I never really imagined that VeChain would drop below $2. So this current price is a massive discount in my opinion. If you were to look at the exchanges that are currently doing the most um, volume on VeChain, you will find it's not actually Binance, it's uh, L Bank. L Bank is a Chinese exchange and so the Chinese people have noticed this and they are scooping up as much as possible. So I think that the X note holders who sold hoping to buy back at a cheaper price, right now it is indeed a cheaper price but I don't think it's going to stay at a cheaper price for much longer. And the thing is, at some point, the X node holders will have to buy the tokens back before the end of August, which is the next snapshot. So right now, at this point, I think this is a really good time to get in. And all of this is, of course, subject to the general market condition as well. Now, there has also been clear market manipulation of VeChain's price. This is a graph taken less than 24 hours ago from an exchange, and it shows a massive sale of almost half a million VeChain tokens in less than one minute. So if that's not a dump, I don't know what that is. So VeChain at the moment is being manipulated. It's just received a dump, and it's definitely a token that I got my eye on in this season. The third coin that I want to highlight to you today is Elastos. And if you've watched my Elastos review, you will know that I also like this project very much. A news that caused some fart for Elastos back in February and has recently resurfaced again is that the price of tokens that their angel investors received um, was disproportionately large. Okay, it was a very, very poorly done token mechanics. So angel investors into this project such as Da Hongfei, they got to buy Elastos token at 10,000 tokens for one Bitcoin. In comparison, in the public offering, investors only got to buy 800 Elastos tokens for one Bitcoin. So that's over a 12x difference. It's very unfair, but it's old news and we knew it back in February of 2018. But very strategically in the recent down market a few days ago, some people decided to throw this piece of news up and stir up a lot of discussion about it again. And surprisingly, okay, a lot of the Elastos community jumped on board and there was a lot of anger and there's a lot of disappointment. And um, a lot of the community members started saying that this coin is worthless, it's going to crash to 20 cents, etc. You know, just a lot of fat suddenly just took hold of this project. Now, the angel investor token release, as unfair as it is, is really only due to be released in February of 2019. So it seems a little odd to me that it was mentioned so heavily and shielded so heavily recently. And it, I mean, the, the whole news thing about uh, this angel investor news just felt to me like uh, a bit artificial, like an organized fad. That's just my personal opinion. You can take it how you will. What is of genuine concern to me is what will happen in early August. Now in early August, I think it's the 2nd of August, the tokens that are being held by private investors, so not the angel investors, the private investors, okay, that amount of tokens will be released. And that is a very huge amount. That's 2 million tokens, okay? And you might think 2 million tokens is not a lot, but Elastos is not a project with 1 billion tokens. Elastos at the moment, their circulating supply is only 5 million tokens. So adding 2 million tokens is essentially adding 40% volume suddenly to the circulating supply, which will definitely cause a dilution of the, of the price, potentially a 40% dilution of the price. It is also expected that the private investors will dump the coins once they, the coins are released and that's going to further crash the price. I think that this may actually happen. If I was a private investor and you know I, I own a, a million tokens, I would definitely sell it immediately once I got out. So I think that Elastos is due to have quite a few rough weeks ahead. Fortunately, it's not all bad news for Elastos. There are some good news to be expected coming up soon. And that includes up to six potential exchange listing. They're going to have their first airdrop in mid-August. And there's going to be a token burn of 300 to 400,000 tokens in mid-August as well. So the token price currently is sitting at $19.22 and is below $20. Again, I think that this is a very cheap entry point for Elastos. And I think that this price will probably rise a little bit over the next few days if Bitcoin rises as well. 
However, I still think that 2 million token release, which is a 40% dilution, is very significant in early August. And so for the above reasons, even though it's below $20 and so attractive, I'm not investing in Elastos right now. But I'm going to keep a very close eye for that window period after the 20 million token release, but before the airdrop and the token burn. And if the price is right there, that's definitely a potential entry point for myself. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just my personal thoughts uh, sharing with you what I'm thinking of doing in this season. Um, so Loopring, VeChain and Elastos, those are the big three coins that I got my eye on in the market at the moment. But right now, I also want to run through with you some of my other favorite coins just so that you know what I'm thinking and what price points I'm looking as a good entry point for these other coins. The first coin that I like is... HPB or high performance blockchain. Now, if we did this video two weeks ago, HPB would have been one of the big three I would look out for. The reason is because HPB's mainnet was due to be released at the end of June. However, they announced a delay to the mainnet, and as a result, the price suffered significantly, as you can see from the graph. For a very long time now, HPB was sitting very comfortably between $4.20 and $4.80, definitely above $4. So when I see HPB anywhere around $2 or below $2 recently, okay, to me, this price point is a real bargain. It's always been a bargain every time it's dropped below $2. Uh, am I worried that the mainnet has been delayed? No, I'm not. Okay, out of the 70 projects or more that we've reviewed on the channel over the last five months, HPB stands out to me as one of the strongest platforms in the fundamental sense. That's why I'm not worried because I know the fundamentals of this project and I trust it. With a lesser project, I might be worried that they can't deliver, but with HPB, I just see this price as a good buying opportunity. The next coin on my radar is Zpin. If you've been on Telegram chat recently, you would know that I'm very bullish on Zpin and I've been watching it like a hawk. Zpin is a very solid project that's over 80% down from its all-time high. And over the last couple of weeks, Zpin has been sitting quite comfortably between 3 cents and 3.3 cents until last night. Last night there was a sudden dump onto the coin and it happened very quickly over a few minutes literally. And because I was watching this coin like a hawk, I managed to get in and buy a bag of the coin at uh, 2.8 cents. And since then overnight it's risen to 3.8 cents. So I, I'm quite happy with the um, price at the moment. The volume at the moment is still quite uh, strong. So I think I'm just going to keep an eye on this project. I think that the coin will continue to rise a little bit more and probably not that much more because it's already um, done a very big correction. But I think that once the volume starts to tail off, the price will likely correct after that. And then I'm just going to keep a close eye on Zpin and see if I can find another entry point. Now, since my last video on Zpin, okay, I've paid very close attention to it. I've started playing Crypto Galaxy, the game on the platform. I got myself a planet and I participated recently in their recent um, beta test for version 1.5. I'm quite excited about the whole Zpin project because over the next couple of months, they have four dApps that are close to completion. Their mainnet is due in the next month and version 1.5 of Crypto Galaxy is expected to be released within the next one to two weeks with Zpin token staking. Staking is always huge news and furthermore, the rumors on their social media is that there's a big partnership to be announced soon as well. So with a very small market cap of less than 20 million currently, I think that this is a project that is very undervalued and due to gain big traction soon. So when their new white paper is released with details of staking and mainnet, I will do an update video on Zpin. But this is definitely a project that I recommend keeping an eye on in this season. The next project is a lot of people's favorite, which is Ontology. Now, it's been quite a while since we last saw Ontology drop below $4. $4 has always been a very strong support line for Ontology. Personally, I really like the Ontology project and I'm also very keen on staking for ONG tokens. But at the moment, I feel that there are other equally good projects which have fallen further. So personally, I'm not investing into Ontology at this point. I'm going to look out for a price point of below $3. If it falls below $3, I'm going to buy a bag of Ontology. But if it never gets there, that's all right. It just means that I'm putting my money into other good opportunities, so I don't feel bad about it either way. Um, one good project that I think is at a very attractive price right now is Icon. 
Icon at its peak in January was sitting at almost $12 and right now it's sitting at $1.46. So that's such a huge bargain. The 450 and 417 mark has always been a very strong support for Icon for a long time. So right now, I, I think that you know one third of their strong support, right? Anything below three dollars would have been a great bargain. Anything below 150, which is where it's at now, is simply crazy to me. So I think that Icon is one of the best buys at the moment. I think that they are one of the best projects with one of the strongest fundamentals in the market. And they also have staking to be announced hopefully sometime later this year. So this is a project that I do try to load up on whenever I can. Another prominent coin for me with solid fundamentals is OMG. Now $10 has always been the magic number for me and OMG this year. Only twice have we seen it drop below $10 and every time it's gone above, I always regret not buying OMG. OMG is the plasma child of Ethereum and their technology is close to being done. They've got government partnerships with Thailand and McDonald's as well. So, you know, this is a very stable coin that will offer passive income. I think it's a great project. The current price is a great price and I'm also keeping a very close eye on this coin. The last coin that I want to just uh, briefly cover is NEO. So we always talk about diversifying our portfolios and I think that every healthy portfolio needs to have a mix of both small and big coins. Big coins like NEO provide stability. For some people, the big coins that they invest in is Bitcoin or Ether, but for me, my Bitcoin is NEO. I think that NEO has a great ecosystem, it's the big upcoming daddy of the East. NEO to me is a very solid investment. So for a very long time, NEO was sitting above $90. It's very rare to see it so low. Anywhere below $45 uh, at the current price, $36, I think is a very, very good entry point. So again, NEO is another coin that I'm paying very close attention to. Now, I've mentioned all of these coins, but of course, I don't have the money or fiat to invest in all of these coins. Instead, what I do, guys, is that I have a watch list on Coin Codex that I go to and I review this list several times every day. And because I've been following all of these coins for quite a while, I've become quite familiar with their price points and I know how to recognize a good entry point when I see one. So if there was a sudden dump that was to happen, like for example with ZPIN last night, I can recognize that as a good um, opportunity and act on it immediately. If a coin was to drop particularly hard, for example, Loopwing or VeChain or Elastos, I will also notice it immediately and then I can read up and learn why that happened. And based on my, the reading that I do, I can then decide when is going to be a good entry point for that project. So it's impossible to follow up all the coins on the market, but I do strongly suggest you have or uh, use a watch list if you're not already using one. I do also recommend joining a good community social media group to learn what other investors are paying attention to at the moment. A good community group will give you a very good um, feel of the overall market because different investors are paying attention to different coins. And then as we discuss it in the community setting, you will develop a very good feel of the whole market. Otherwise, as individual investors, we do risk becoming tunnel vision on our favorite coins. If you're looking for a good group to join, do consider joining our Telegram group. In fact, I strongly encourage you to. I don't want to boast about the group, but the quality of the conversations and the guys on the group are simply amazing. A lot of them know much more than me, and oftentimes I jump onto the chat to learn things from the people who are on the chat. You will also find us discussing quite personal questions like what is in our personal portfolio, which I don't cover very much on the video. And you will definitely find me a lot more on the chat in over this period of time where I'm too busy to make a whole video, but I'm definitely still following the market and active on the chat. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this video finds you well because I haven't caught up with you guys for quite a while. And I hope that you're enjoying the green day that we have at the moment. So stay cool and I'll catch you guys again very soon.